Hello everyone, thanks for joining in uh, to listen to this podcast. Uh, my name is Gabby and welcome to What's Your Story by Gabby and today I've got with me Dean Cook. Dean, welcome. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Really honoured to have you here. So we're filming this in January 24. It won't necessarily be published in January 24, but we're filming in January 24. Um, okay, so um, can you tell me where you're from, Dean? I'm from Mill Hill, North London. Have you lived in Mill Hill, North London all your life? No, originally from Richmond upon Thames. Uh, we moved to Finchley in the 80s and then moved to Mill Hill in the 90s. Okay. So, do you yeah. like being in Mill Hill? Yes, I do, yeah. Okay. Um, and can you tell me a bit about what you do and some hobbies that you might have? Um, so I'm a security officer. I've been doing my job for 20 years this year. Um, I've got many different hobbies. Um, so I want to do a lot of different things from um, Thai boxing to Krav Maga to football to music to dogs breeding, showing, judging um, to uh, painting trainers. Uh, lots of different, lots of different things I do in my time. I'm like, yeah, I'm like yeah. flabbergasted by that. Yeah, list. so there's a lot of different things that I do. I'm someone who's always doing something, always okay. trying to do different things. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, let's break this down. Please. How did you become a security officer? <sighs> well, I was working uh, in a building when I was at college uh, cleaning, and um, I got to know the people in the building. Uh, the security guys in the building and when I qualified, sorry, when I passed uh, my degree in 2004, they asked me what I was going to do then and I said I had to look for a job and they asked me well, how, they, how about joining the team and becoming one of us um, and that's what happened so I sort of fell into the job and trained but I actually had studied the BA in sport and management but ended up working in security and the kind of security I do I suppose you'd call it counter-terrorism um, and yeah, I really enjoy uh, doing it. I've been 20 years doing, doing that job. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to delve too much no, into that. No, yeah, no. I, I, you have told me before yeah, not, of course. not to. Yeah. Um, okay, and then let's go through. You listed quite a lot of different hobbies. Yeah. Which one was the first one? You... So when I was around about eight, nine, ten, I started actually uh, getting into martial arts, karate. I think it was the uh, Karate Kid effect, watching Karate Kid in the 80s. I wanted to be like Daniel Russo and then went to karate. And also really helped my confidence. As a child, I think I lacked a lot of confidence, and this really helped my confidence to come up myself more uh, doing karate. So I did that, and then from there I went to school and started playing football and got really into football, but then my grandfather, my uncle, were also very good footballers as well. So I got into football and started playing Sundays and then Saturdays, and bless my father, came to every match with me, every training session, mm -hmm. he was there. And then from that, I um, got into music at a young age and I started emceeing to garage music and dance music with my friends in their bedrooms, had their decks and stuff, and we started doing that. And then I started running my own little nights in a local pub in, in North Finchley. Um, did that through my college, first of all, like a college event, and then started promoting my own events. And then from that, I went abroad to Felaraki in 2002, which is Rhodes, spent the season emceeing in the clubs out there in the bars. And then from there, I came back and joined a pirate station called Shine FM, which is a uh, big, uh, pirate station in London back in the time joined there had a Wednesday evening show 10 till 12 and um, yeah just did, it was amazing times back in the 2000s it was a busy station um, I was doing a lot of events pubs uh, sorry clubs and bars and stuff um, so that, yeah so that was for, for the music but then on the other side of that I was from football I started then doing uh, Krav Maga which is the Israeli hand-to-hand combat uh, there I trained that weekly I fell in love with it got addicted to training I trained under a guy called, um, oh, I forget his name now. Um, was it local? Yeah, it was local, yes. And, and, I, trained, um, and I trained for that. And, um, Do they have different levels? Yeah, so it's basically a hand to hand combat. Um, and it's, it's, it's like a self defense system. It's not, I, they call it a martial art, but I wouldn't call it a martial art. It's based on natural movement and reactions. Um, and I sort of got hooked with it. And uh, Gordon Levy was my instructor. And from that, I, um, how old were you at that time? So mid twenties. And how old are you now, by the way? Forty four this April, so forty three at the minute. Yeah. So um, so I got addicted to that. Me and my friend Chris, who came along with me, was a good friend of mine. We got addicted. We were training all the time, and then we became instructors in two thousand and seven. We became 
possibly one of the first instructors in the UK, maybe 30 of us. It was very, a very small thing, Krav Maga. It wasn't very well known in the UK. Um, and from that, I went abroad and trained in places like Czechoslovakia, uh, did weapons training, third party protection, uh, like uh, yeah, third party protection training, like close protection training. Um, and then from that as well, I started Thai boxing because I wanted to do something else. So I added Thai boxing onto that uh, and then I wanted to compete. So at the time I weighed about 85 kilos so I needed to get to 67 kilos to compete. So my coach at the time, Simon Wells, said, you can do that. Uh, we'll get you sparring, get you running, and get you dieting. And so, yeah, I lost the weight and I started competing. You dropped from 85? To 67 kilos, yeah. Fascinating. Well, 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 yeah. Um, and was that difficult? It, 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 it was, took a lot of discipline from the diet, from the running every day, from the training, uh, running every day, four or five miles most days every day. Uh, plus, yeah, just sorting out the carbs. Uh, the chicken, rice, salad, salmon, the fruits. It's cutting out all the rubbish, the sugars. So and you were di really disciplined back then? Yeah. Would you s describe yourself as, as still quite a disciplined person? I'd say not, not as indisciplined as that, but I'm a particular about how things are, i.e. how my clothes are, how my room is, how things are set out, how things are done. I have to, has to be neat and tidy in a certain way. Um, so, um, so yes, yeah, so, so then I did that. So, uh, and then I've always had dogs in my early 20s. I had dogs, um, but just as pets. And I got an American Bulldog when I was probably maybe 24, 25. Uh, and I started showing her. She didn't do very well at the shows, but I liked the shows uh, and like the whole bull breeds and stuff. I got Wait, into that. What, what inspired you to do the show in the first place? I think for me, it's about learning, okay? So back in them days, the internet wasn't a big thing. So to learn about these dogs, i.e. the health, to look, you know, looking after them, um, just basic things. Go to a show and to meet someone who has experience was the best way for me to talk to people and to find out how do you feed your dog, how do you exercise your dog. Right. Yeah, so that's how so I. So you learned. did it as a learning. Experience. Yeah, it, it was a learning thing. So I took my bulldog to at the time, but she didn't take to showing, which was fine. So I still went and watched and stuff, and then. Um, probably 2013, I got my bulldog, my old English bulldog, Vegas. And then uh, when he was two years old, um, in 2015, I took him to a show. And at this time, they were massively old English bulldogs. And I showed him, I think it was about 12 dogs in the ring, didn't expect much, and he came second. And the judge told me he had a very good dog. So I kept showing him, and lo and behold, a few years later, I made him a British champion under the New England Bulby Registry. So how did you make him into a champion? So he has to win shows, a certain amount of shows, first, second, third, you get points, and you have to win a certain amount of uh, best, male, best, best male, best of breed under different judges, you're called majors, and you get points, you have to get 100 points overall. So it keeps going, keep collecting points, and keep getting them wins. And uh, he became a judge, the, ju the show's all over the UK, um, from the Midlands to St. Helens I've been, to Bournemouth, to all over the place with him. So it's a lot of hard work and dedication, practice, uh, for example, stacking him, standing him, uh, walking him, we call gating, and let the judge also open his mouth and just get him to be relaxed and stuff like that. It's not easy. They say never work with kids or dogs, and it's true. Animals, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. So I did that with him, become, become a champion a few years ago, which was like the ultimate, the ultimate thing. And from then also with breeding him as well and breeding other people's dogs for them as well. Um, and then I asked the guy, Wayne Robertson, who owns the registry, the New England Bullby Registry is the biggest Bullby Registry in the UK, 50,000 plus dogs. So your uh, like a lot so, so your bulldogs, old English bulldogs, French bulldogs, staffs, American bulldogs, all registered bull, bull breeds. Um, so I asked him about becoming a judge and he said, you'll be great for it because I've already made Vegas a champion. He said, you'll be ideal for that. So I um, had to shadow judges for quite a while, but I really had a massive background knowledge of dogs anyway, which was, which was really good for me. And then lo and behold, last year I qualified as a judge and started judging my own shows and I've done several different shows now by myself. Um, uh, and I've recently, again, this show, this year I've been asked to do one in March already. So when you say by yourself, do you organise them or they? No, so they, they run the show, but I'll be given, uh, given a ring at the show. So say, say today you'll be judging the old English Bulldogs, you'll be judging the French Bulldogs today. So right. it goes from sexism, uh, male, female, different ages, and then the best of that age will go up against the best of this and so, so on. Okay, so I have to do that whole ring by myself. 
Um, every dog has a breed standard, which will be to do with the height, the weight, the ears, the eyes, the coat, everything as a judge you should know. Also movement, how the dog moves as well, and temperament, things like this. So the dog on the day that's nearer fitting the standard that you believe will win overall, whether it's male, female, whatever age it is. How many dogs would be entered into a show at any one time? I guess it, 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 really, it really depends, if I'm honest. Um, I mean, you could have, I mean, I've had maybe 10 in the ring at once, but because they're male and female. So, yeah. And, and where, where typically do you travel a lot? Yeah, so, um, so the show I've got in March will be Derby, and I've just asked them doing a show in May, which will be in Edinburgh. So, okay. So I go as far as Edinburgh, but I've been all over the UK. Doing so you things. drive and come back, or you stay um, the night? Yeah, so it will drive. For example, Edinburgh, I will fly there and stay there, fly there the okay. and come back. But yeah, typically drive for the day and, and come back. Do you enjoy that? Uh, very much so, yeah. Very, very much so. There, it's, it's from showing, from being this side and now now judging the other side, you can see the different perspectives of, of how it is. It's very different. And I understand how they feel when they show the disappointment when your dog doesn't place or you think it should win. And you have to explain to the person to why you placed their dog where you did and it didn't come first, second or third. But I've been there and I understand that. There's a lot of pressure as well. You don't realise when you're there, the concentration that you have to do to see the dogs and watch the dogs. Um, but yeah, so, but I do really enjoy it. Yeah, I hope to be involved many more years to come. Sounds with fascinating. The dogs. Now, I've lost track of the time, so Hayley, just keep an eye on that because that's why. So I did start a stopwatch, <laughs> but you mentioned painting of trainers. Yeah, so I started during, during lockdown, I just started customizing trainers. I got, I got bored, I thought, you know, I'll give it a go, and I started painting trainers. And it was a little hobby of mine, really. And I actually um, had painted a lot of trainers with people as well that come to me and asked me to paint trainers for uh, their children, for birthdays, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs. Um, presents, etc., as well. So I got I got into that as well. That was something Amazing. on the creative side. It was very different out of my comfort zone, really. Right. And that's yeah, that's what I did. So um, yeah, like I said, I'm someone who does a lot of different things. Do you still do that? Uh, if asked to, and I've done stuff for myself and my family, whatever. Yeah, then I, I couldn't. Yeah. And are you that. comfortable being outside of your comfort zone? Um, I think the problem with me sometimes is lacking self confidence and self belief. Like I do all these different things. For example, I go into a club or bar and I will MC in front of 100 people and they'll come to see me, but it's believing that I can, that I should be there. Does that make sense? Like I, like I belong there. Yeah. That they've, and, and they've come to see me and when they say to me, wow, it's amazing. And I'm still thinking, oh, really? Like, and people ring me to book me for events for 40th birthdays or for parties. And I'll be like, oh, they, they, want, they want me to be there? Do okay, I mean? so, so it sounds like you've got self-doubt, but you'll do it anyway. Yeah, I'll do it anyway. And I, I guess I have a little, I always have a little bit of anxiety. Not, I won't have nerves, but I have anxiety. Like, same voice to fight. Like, a lot of people before they fight would get really anxious and nervous, and even some people would physically be sick and shaking before they get into the ring. But me, it was like, just getting anxious. So, like, I, you know, I just wanted to get in and do it. Uh, and again, tie boxing, that was the point. The, for me, that was the biggest challenge of, for me, was getting in the ring and actually, because a team sport, you have other people behind you that you can rely on or even blame if you want to. But when you're in a combat sport, it's just you and other person. There's no one else to rely on apart from yourself. And you have to dig deep sometimes. When someone's hitting you, kicking you in the face, you, you have to find a lot about yourself. It's like fight or flight, yes? Yeah. So you find out a lot about yourself, okay? Fascinating. So um, for me, yeah, it's, it's definitely, even with the judging, people will, will come talk to me and I still think, oh, really, I, I can't believe sometimes that I'm doing this, all these dogs and stuff, and here I am in the ring, um, about to make a dog, you know, a champion possibly, giving out, you know, a champion title to a dog. It's, it's yeah. Brilliant. I think we may have run out of time which is a shame. Yeah. <laughs> 10 minute interview isn't enough it, sometimes. It, yeah, it goes very quick. It, it sounds like we could do a second interview very soon. Definitely. But I've really enjoyed having you on here. Thank you, Gavin. Actually, you. just one more thing. If you had a top tip to share with, with someone who might be listening, some kind of well, advice. Well, I think, like I, I said, like, um, life's very short, so do everything you've wanted to try to do. If you wanted to do Thai boxing, you want to do music, you wanted to go running, you want to do something, give it a go. Don't think that you can't do it. So give it a go. And like I say, was, again, self-belief is a very hard thing. And if you've got people around you that don't believe in you, it's hard as well. So people, surround yourself with positive people that will believe in you and encourage you and be there and say, yes, you can do it. You, you, this is, you, can, you can do it. And do it. it. Yeah, and do it. Dean, I but love yeah, it. I thank love you it. very much. Thank you, thank thank you for you. being on the thank show. Thank you very much. Really appreciate thank it. Uh, if you enjoyed listening to that, please do click like, subscribe. And if you want to be interviewed, please send an email. Or what's your story by Gabby at gmail.com. What's your story by Gabby at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening.